Time now for a look at the day's top business news, starting with the latest in the ongoing U.S.-China trade war, as U.S. President Donald Trump sparks some confusions over what he's willing to accept in the next round of negotiations. Brian Quinn joining us in the, the studio. Morning, Brian. You're going to tell us more about this ongoing trade war. Well, Will, the possibility of, quote, an interim deal is the latest variable as Chinese negotiators prepare their trip to Washington next week for the next round of trade talks. Washington and Beijing have been making conciliatory gestures ahead of that meeting, with China renewing its purchases of U.S. farm goods and Trump delaying a planned tariff hike on Chinese goods. On Thursday, the president signaled he would be open to a partial agreement ahead of a comprehensive deal, though he later clarified he would prefer a full and final deal. Global economic growth has taken a significant hit from the battle between the world's top two economies. Trump sounded a diplomatic note as he spoke to reporters. Here he is. I got a call from heads of China. The call was directed to my people, actually, and they asked whether or not it would be possible to delay the hit on the tariffs up to 30 percent from 25 percent. Uh, they were going to be set on October 1st. We're moving it to October 15th because they're having their 70th anniversary. And I will do that again in honor of President Xi. Well, investors certainly cheered by potential signs of progress there. A new round of interest rate cuts and bond buying from the European Central Bank Thursday also boosting Wall Street's last session. Here in Europe, markets opened relatively flat. London down just over a tenth of a percent. Paris and Frankfurt on either side of the flat line. Paris gaining a bit in the most recent moments. Asian indexes with some decent headway in Friday trade. The Nikkei in Tokyo closed up just over 1%. Telecom's giant SoftBank gaining over 3% there. Hong Kong's Hang Seng up two-thirds of a percent. Markets in Shanghai and Seoul are closed on Friday for autumn harvest festivals. The next, a new law passed this week in California is aimed at bringing stability to gig workers in the so-called sharing economy but it's also likely to have knock-on effects in a number of other industries. If enacted, the law rather will mean workers can only be independent contractors if they're not under the company's control while working and only if their work falls outside, quote, the usual course of company business. That means translators, construction workers, wine growers, and adult entertainers all could see their statutes changed. Camille Medelik reports. In the modern gig economy, independent drivers have long complained of low pay and long hours. If I'm lucky, I make an hourly of $20 an hour. Uh, after expenses, it's less than minimum wage. But that could be about to change. California's new labor law takes aim at apps such as Lyft and Uber, stipulating that many independent contractors are in fact employees meaning companies will have to provide employee benefits. The change is likely to increase costs for the rideshare apps. But what the companies are saying is that this is a risk to their business model. That's a very vague term. It will increase the, the, their labor costs by about 30 to percent to pay a higher wage, to pay benefits and so on. But it could also have a knock-on effect on many other industries that depend on contractors, such as construction, trucking and translators of rare languages, where there isn't a demand for a full-time job. California's famous wine growers are also worried. They use contractors to transport their grapes, study the soil and predict the varieties that will be in demand. Uber, which already loses billions of dollars annually, has vowed to fight the legislation. The bill is set to go into effect on January the 1st, 2020, and the rest of the U.S. is watching. Labor experts expect other states in the country to pass similar laws. French Finance Minister Bruno Le Maire has been at the forefront of a battle to rein in giant tech firms in Europe. He now has a new target in Facebook's plan to launch its own cryptocurrency, the Libra. Facebook says the Libro, which is also backed by Visa, MasterCard and PayPal, could open up e-commerce and financial services to more than a billion people who lack traditional banking services. The company plans to peg the Libra to a basket of real currencies and oversee it with a non-profit trust based in Switzerland. Le Maire told a meeting at the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development that France will block the Libra in Europe, though. Here he is. 
Libra, ce serait une monnaie globale. Libra would be a global currency in the hands of one player that has more than two billion users around the world. The state's monetary sovereignty is in play here. La souveraineté monétaire de nos nations the monetary sovereignty of our nations is in play. In the states, where the currency is weak, and there are many of them, Libra could become a substitute to the sovereign currency, and thus become a challenge to their sovereignty. And finally, for business, a number of American CEOs are calling for tightening U.S. gun laws as mass shootings continue to plague the United States leaders of nearly 150 firms have sent an open letter to Congress demanding action. Led by Levi Strauss CEO Chip Berg and the gun control group Every Town for Gun Safety, the letter asks senators to pass laws requiring background checks on gun sales. Uber, Twitter and Royal Caribbean also among the companies represented. U.S. businesses are increasingly being called upon to take a position on new firearms legislation legislation that's currently being blocked by Republicans in the U.S. Senate. The private sector stepping in where the public sector perhaps not doing its job well. Yeah, at least perhaps not till maybe next year. Who knows? Maybe there'll be a new president. Okay. We could see how that goes. Brian Quinn with a roundup of the business. The 